During Money Talks, you would propel millions of ACDC bucks or Angus bucks into That's right. the crowd. Good day, very good, good currency, you know. <laughs> Did you ever think that that currency should have been adopted in Europe instead of the euro? Oh, of but they, they were talking about that. I think it was Alvin, a uh, business manager over there, that said, Mal, you know, these dollars are worth more than what the euro are. <laughs> 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 more, they're worth more value. You can get ten bucks on the street for one. <laughs> and following Donington, you headlined a show at Tushino Airfield in Russia. To what was reported, one million plus people. How did performing at this massive festival compare to Donington? Well, it was different. It was certainly different because it was that was sort of like historical, you know. In a real way, you know, it was it was more in the you know them changing over from communism into, into um, their freedom, their democracy, yeah. you know, and and, it, and we were there within a week. Of and what better capitalists to call on? <laughs> <laughs> that, cap that was a free show, yes. Yeah, yeah. And um, it that that everyone just felt honoured to be in Moscow, you know, and that that show, I mean it. You know, you were playing to people who'd never seen anything like a light show, never mind. They might have seen an Elton John in the past. Or, you know, they'd always seen the weird ones over there, you know, but... <laughs> <laughs> but they'd never really seen a hardcore, rock, big, big show, you know, yeah. and they put things like Disney cartoons, not Disney, uh, Warner Brothers cartoons, and I shouldn't say Warner Brothers, but cartoons on there. And things like funny and loony, you know, those loony things. And the kids had never seen anything like that either. Mm -hmm. And they were stunned just looking at that before the bands would come on. Yeah. But when we came on with all the cannons and everything, I think they, they weren't sure if we were going to shoot them with them at first, you know. Yeah, they had two armies doing the security, you know, like separate armies. Just in case, because they were uh, still a bit edgy about... Uh, they had already nearly... Uh, I think that guy... Uh, who was the boss? Uh, Yeltsin, yeah. And um, and uh, they'd had, to, you know, a bit of ruckus at, at uh, where he lived, I think. And a bit of ruckus, and the kids, defend, the younger ones, defended it. So sort of defused, uh, you know, like this coup thing. And uh, that was their prize, you know, that they get, you know, they get show. And, you know, and then, then they got us because they heard we were in Europe at the time. And uh, you know, they sent that big you know, plane, that big antenna, I remember that giant thing, you know, and they could get all the gear in and, you know, and bring us in. It was, you know, it was so, st so strange, you know, you know, go in a place, you know, that you heard the Iron Curtain and stuff, and I remember getting off the plane and, uh, you know, the first thing, I, you know, you realise with all these, you know, because I saw all these military young guys with the... Uh, Stuff and I thought, oh, they're going to arrest me or something. You know? And then they just, you know, no passports, no nothing, follow us, and then they took us. <laughs> took they escorted us. They escorted us, eh? And then the, the, the Cossacks, like the Russian the, the the angels, angels, you know, they, they came along the outside. To them, you know, the so police. you had this. Yeah. And then they told the police to get lost, <laughs> and they took us <laughs> to the gig. <laughs> That was strange. It was all strange in a way, you know, when we got there. Because the you didn't know, were they going to kidnap us or not? Yeah. You know? Everyone went straight to the wardrobes in their room, <laughs> hotel rooms, and looked for bugs in Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. when we'd gone into the hotel, it was full of, what do they call them, the KGB guys, you know, but they'd all got gone American style, you know, they'd have walkie talkies. Yeah. They would just wind around the whole hotel lobby, yeah. and everywhere you walked, there were all their eyes. <laughs> it was, it yeah, was they a strange. Yeah, Hawaiian shirts on, but we knew who they were. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, but when getting back to Donington, you know, I mean, that's it. You, you couldn't compare the two. It was, you know, you, you're playing to people that see rock shows every day when you go to Donington, but Moscow is just that little bit. Um, yeah. It was more special for mm. it, it, in its own way because mm. you know we felt we we've sort of made a little bit of history ourselves because they actually mm. asked Yeltsin asked the kids mm. you know f because the, he the, the students stu stood behind him they asked yeah. what can we do we want to do something for you and they came back and says we want ACDC 
in Moscow, a free show. And uh, we were there a week later, so they, they did it for the, for the kids, really, you know. So that was a sort of extra special thing. It, it wasn't like fun and rock and roll, you know. Yeah, all... because we were on the KGB hit list before that, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Things not to have, you know, <laughs> in Russia. <laughs> Little boys in school suits. <laughs>